Hi, I'm Henry Sagerman. This is dodecahedral holonomy maze. This is a dodecahedral version of my previous holonomy maze, which was based on octahedral geometry. Just as with the octahedral version, the goal is to get this little piece called a rook out of the sphere. In place of this square-footed rook, here we need a rook with a hexagonal foot. This is maybe a little surprising. You might expect a triangular rook, since there are three edges coming out of each vertex of the dodecahedron. But when you slide from one vertex to a neighbor, the triangle of directions you need to be able to travel in is flipped. So in fact, you need a hexagon. Here's how the toes of the foot slide between the rails. In the octahedral holonomy maze, going around a triangle rotates the rook by a quarter turn. Here, going around a pentagon rotates the rook by a sixth of a turn. The dodecahedron has 20 vertices, and the rook can be in one of six orientations at each of them, so the maze has a total of 120 nodes, up from 24, in the octahedral maze. So it's five times bigger, although somehow it doesn't feel quite that big. Perhaps this is because you can see more of the maze at once. Just as with the octahedral holonomy maze, we can visualize the nodes and possible edges of the maze as a three-dimensional graph. Again, I made a physical sculpture out of tubes and connectors, this time with Jaime Goodman Strauss and Sabena Matsumoto. As you can see, it's pretty complicated. There's a lot of really nice structure in this graph, for example, you can see that it locally matches up with this dodecahedron we made with the same coloring. Nan Ma pointed out to me that the graph is a two-fold quotient of the regular complex polygon 2103, and the graph for the octahedral holonomy maze turns out to be a two-fold quotient of the regular complex polygon 264. As with the octahedral version, the pegs block some moves when the rook is facing the wrong way. Again, I did some computer searches to find peg positions that would make an interesting maze. This time, however, there are many more choices to make, so many that a brute force search would be too slow. So there's some pruning of the search space. For example, I don't want to have a peg on both the left and the right side of an edge, because then the rook can't get through it no matter which way it's facing. So anytime I put down a peg, I rule out the peg on the other side of the edge as a possibility. I also knew that I didn't want that many dead ends, there are some local configurations that produce lots of dead ends, so I ruled them out as well. This, together with some code profiling, got the search down to a manageable few hours. But what was I searching for anyway? My first thought was to find the longest possible path from the start to the exit. This seems to be 55 steps long, which is not bad out of 120 possible nodes. But the graph looks like this. It's mostly linear, and there are even some inaccessible nodes down at the bottom, and so this isn't very good for a maze. So then I started looking for mazes more like this one. All of the nodes are reachable, there are lots of loops, there's a reasonably long path from the start to the exit, and also some bottlenecks. These make it less likely that you'll just bump into the solution, and can also give a sense of progress as you solve. The geometry of the puzzle is entirely generated by this grasshopper code. It would be much simpler if I didn't need to write lots of special case code for the shapes around the exit. Since I was already searching for the shortest path through the maze to find out how long it is, it didn't take much more work to have the code also animate a solution. As with the octahedral version, I made two different mazes, neither of which is the one in the animation I just showed you, no spoilers. And just as with the octahedral version, it turned out to be cheaper to have the rooks come in pairs. Alright, these are dodecahedral holonomy mazes. Thanks for watching.